Number one, Nishtabra al Luchos. Moshe came down from the mountain with the Luchos Shneos. And he saw the people dancing around the ego and he destroyed the Luchos. Now, the Torah was given, as you know, in Simon. Ivan Arsini was either on the 6th or the 7th of Sivan, depending upon the Machlokas. And then Moshe Rabbeinu, immediately after Arsina, when we heard the Aser Sedibros, he climbs the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights, during which time he's going to receive the Chtei Luchos Ha'edis, Luchos Ha'bris. When he comes down at the end of the 40 days, on the 17th of Tammuz, lo and behold, he sees in front of him the people worshipping the ego. Ubatal atam hatamid, the carbon tamid would no longer be brought because the Xavier the Malchus was that they were enjoined from bringing the carbon tamid in the base of Mingdash. Number three, hufka ha'ir. That means that they broke through the walls of the city of Jerusalem at the time of the Churban Bayesheni. Number four, the Saraf Apostomos S. Hatora. One of the Greek officers by the name of Apostomos during the period of Bayashen took the very Torah that Ezra wrote. Which was placed in the Azora. And that was the Sefer Torah they used as the paradigmic Sefer Torah to determine in any specific Sefer Torah whether or not it's written properly, they would compare it to that Sefer, and Apostolus Thomas burnt that Sefer on the 17th of time. The Gemara is going to, in each case, try to prove that this calamity took place on the 17th of Thomas. The Hemid, okay, Hemid is a reference to Menashe Melch Yehuda, who established the Tzelem so this Menashe, who is the king of Judea, he actually entered into the Hechal with a Getchka, with a, a, a Tzelem, into the Beis Amigdash. So let's go over this. Nishtabra Luchos, Patel Atomid, Hufka Ir, Sarf Apis Thomas the Satora, Hamid Zelen Behechel. Five things that occurred on Shiva Sobatamas. Next, we get to Tishaba. Another five calamities. Nigzar al Mosenu, this is the Dar Midbar after the Chaitam Araglim. And they cried that night. That was Bethia Chalchina. Chaloyi Kansu, the Xera was, they will not enter to Eretz Yisra. And in fact, from that generation of the Midbar, very few people made it to Eretz so, I mean, obviously, Yoshua and Kolo. So that's the first thing. The, the Klola in the aftermath of the Chet Hamaragni that Gezerah was, was issued on Tisha by a Kurdish bar. The Chorav Bayes Marishona, the Gemara is going to prove that the Churban of the first Bayes took place on Tisha B'Av, Ushnia, the second Churban also took place on Tisha B'Av. And the Gemara doesn't really have any proof that the second Churban took place on, this, on Tisha B'Av, but the Gemara says, Megalgalin, Choval, Yidei Chova. Now, since we know that the first Mikdash was destroyed on Tisha B'Av, we know that the second Mikdash as well was destroyed on Tisha B'Av. Now, 
And the truth is that the burning of the Beis HaMikdash took place on the 8th of Av. But it burned from the 8th of Av into the 9th of Av. Or maybe you could say, no, I'm sorry. Let me correct myself. The burning took place on the 9th of Av. That's the beginning. And the actual burning was on the 10th of Av. But there's a principle called Naschalta de Paranus. We go back to the very beginning. What's the fourth thing that took place on Tishba? Milkida Beta. This was a gigantic city in Israel with a population of tens of thousands of Jews. They had a great king in Betar. His name was Kozima. And the Chacham of that generation mistakenly identified Koziba as the Mashiach. And the entire city of Betar fell to the hands of the Goyim who destroyed the entire population of Beta. By Sitzara Gidolak Malchurma Beisami. Now, exactly when Betar fell, it seems from both the Tanakh and history that th this took place 52 years after Churbabai Shaykh. And this is based on Yushalmi, on also on Medjush Rabbah and Echa. The Churban of Beta massacre. Number five, Nefeshah Ir. Now, amongst the kings of Edom, of Rome, there was one particular Russia by the name of Turnus Rufus. And for him, it wasn't enough that they destroyed the Migdash. He wanted to completely destroy Jerusalem. And the entire city of Jerusalem became like a Sada Harush, like a plowed up field. And this is based on a, a prophecy of Micha, Tzion Sada Techarish. Fine. Now we finish the five and five, and we go on to study the month of Av, not the ninth of Av, but the month of Amisha. Nichnas Av Matin Besimcha. In other words, we don't have Simcha during the month of Av, and that's called Avel Yishana on the Churban Yushalayim, and we avoid anything that's Misameach Asalayim. Now included in the Matan the Simcha, we have the Masu the Masu Matan, ain't bon and binyan shall simcha, ain't bon and base chasnus, ain't noted nitia shall simcha, like an Elon Godel. Ain't osim sudas erison. The ain't notin icha afkalos sudas. Let's say he says, I want to get married during the month of Av, but there won't be any suit. Unacceptable. The week, this is what we call Shavu Shechal Tishabov. Also, Mila Saper, he's enjoined from cutting the hair on his body, whether it's the hair on his head or any other hair on his body. He has the status of an Ovel. He doesn't launder his clothing during the month, the week, excuse me, the week of Chalbo Tishri. However, Bechamishi, on that Thursday before Tishabov, 
let's say Tishba was on a Friday, on that Thursday, Mutarim Mipnei Kovet HaShabbos. So it's interesting that technically speaking, on the Thursday within the week of Tishabot, you're permitted uh, just one second, it's not the week. We're talking about we're talking about the Friday that's Tishabot. So Tisha B'Av is on a Friday. That Thursday before Tisha B'Av is Mutal Chavez. You're allowed to launder your clothes with make photoshops. Now we're going to learn about the Sudam of Sekhs. Erev Tisha B'Av. Lo Yochal Adam. We're talking about after midday, after Chatzos Hayom. He's not allowed to eat a Suda. That has Shnei Tavshilin. If there are two Tavshilin in the Suda, then he's not allowed to eat that su'uda after midday, after Chatzol Sayom, on the 8th of Av, Erev Tishu. And all this is called Ribui Avelus, that we want to get into the mood for mourning and remembering the Churba Beis HaMikdash and experiencing that grief and misery and tsar over the loss of the Beis Amigdash. So we don't eat two tafshil. Now the poskim have a very interesting analysis here about the similarity between these two tafshilim, which are prohibited in the Sudam of Sekhus on Erev Tisha B'av, and the Shnei tafshilim that we put on the Shulchan on Leil HaPes. And what, why is that important? Because, let's say, I'll give a few examples of Shnei Tavshil. We have Basar, Maluach, and Dogim. Right? So to eat fish and, and meat. Let's say not together, but one after the other. That would be two Tavshil. Or let's say Basar, Maluach, and Beitzim Sha'olov. He makes a concoction here, and he cooks together meat and eggs. Or dagu baits or fish and eggs. And again, it looks like one top shit because he cooks them together, the fish and the eggs, but nevertheless, it's considered shnei tav shilin. And this, the post game, and Rashi already quotes it here, prove it from a Gemara Psachim, in our Psachim, as far as shnei tav shilin, that these combinations of, let's say, basar, the Beitza or Dogim and Beitzim, all these are brought out on the table on the Leila Pes as Shnei Tavshilin. And therefore, in the Sudam of Sekhus and Erev Tishba, they are prohibited because it's Shnei Tavshilin, even though it doesn't look like Shnei Tavshilin. However, the Ramban who wrote a work called Torah Sa'odam disagrees with our Rashi, and he holds that Shnei Minim B'Kedera Achas, if you take two different things, two different species, so to speak, and you cook it together in one pot, Nechshav L'Tav I mean, you're allowed, to, you're allowed to eat it. And he says that even though Elsewhere, we find that Dagu Beitza is considered like Shnei Tav Shilin. For example, if you make an Erev Tav Shilin, so Dagu Beitza Sha'olav is considered two Tav Shilin. That's a Kula that we consider Shnei Tav Shilin, therefore it's a valid area. But as far as Abel's Tishavah is concerned, it's considered one Tav Shilin, it's Mutter. Now later on, Osvis 
writes that anything that could be eaten raw, even if you cook it, like for example, cheese or fruits, ain't bo torres bishel, it's not called a top shield, such that if you had two of them, it would be also at the pseudom of seconds. Because a top shield means something that needs to be cooked and cannot be eaten raw. Like for example, we have with regard to Bishal Akram, that if the guy cooks something that I can eat raw, he takes apples and he cooks them, that's not called Bishal Akram. And that last Su'uda, before Tishbab, he should not eat meat, and he should not drink wine. He's basically in a state of aninus, and onen is enjoined from Achilles Boston, C.S. Yayin. And now going into Tishabov on Erev Tishabov, it's Meso Mutu Mufanov. It's as if he sees in front of his eyes the Churban Abayas. Hence, he's enjoined from eating meat and drinking wine. Rabbi Shimon Gamliel disagrees with the Tanakam Omer. Yeshana. He has to change his hair gear, that which he's used to doing the whole year round. If, let's say, he eats two Tavshil the whole year round, now he eats one tafshir. If he usually drinks at a meal 10 cups of, wa- of wine, then now he should only drink five cups of wine. If he usually has a banquet together with 10 other people, this time he should dine Instead of inviting nine other guests to his table, he, he invites only five. And we're going to see later on in the Gemara, there's no absolute Easter of Achilles boss and Shasiyah's time. Rabbi Yehuda Machayev Mekfiyah Samita. In the laws of Avelus, what we call Avelus Kadosh, if never somebody lost one of his close relatives, He's not allowed to sleep on his bed, but rather he turns his bed upside down and he sleeps on the floor. And Rabbi Yehuda says that Avelis Yeshana for the Chubran Abayis on Tishabav is a duplicate image of the Avelis Chadasha for one of his relatives, and therefore he has to sleep on the floor. Gemar Mawid Katan applies this halach of Kriya Samita B'Avel based on a post. The post says, Dmus diyukti nasati b'chem u'bavanusechem hafachtiya kufu mitosechem olel. And what it means is that because of our sins, Our whole surah, our Tselem el Kim will be marred. And therefore, he's obligated to turn over his bed. Somehow, the Tselem el Kim of a person, the Dmus of a person, reflects itself in the bed he sleeps. But for the Chacham, I think I heard from my Rebbe once. It will get to it later on. That the reason why the Chacham rejected is because the halach of Kriya Samit establishes what's called the base of it. But there's no base of it on Tishma. We're all in our values. Okay, now, once the Mishnah has established the laws of fasting for the Churban and Sorrows, now the Mishnah gives us a little bit of consolation by telling us that it's not all bleak. And it's not all about Churban and commemorating the Tsaros and the Avelus. Don't despair. Ain Yevish. There are also going to be days that are holidays, days of Simcha. And the mission now is going to explain what the Benos Yisrael did on those days of Simcha. And here's where the uh, Shadchanim should listen up. The Gemara later on is going to explain why the 15th of Av is a Yantuf. 
and Yom Kippur is the day of Slicha Mechila. It's the day in which the second pair of luchos were given. And how do these two days manifest a celebration of the Bnos Yisrael? Shebahen Bnos Yisrael Yotzos would play love on on these days. The Bnos Yisrael would go out publicly wearing white clothes. But now the Mishnah adds the word Shaulim. That all the girls used to have to borrow one from the other. So a rich girl would have to borrow a beged, a klilavan from her friend. It was absolute equality. And this way we avoid humiliating someone who doesn't have a beged lover, who would therefore have to borrow a beged lover from her neighbor, from her friend, but now everyone's got to borrow. All these begotten have to go into the mikvah before the levisha because no one could know exactly what her fellow with her colleague, with, with a, maybe she was a leader. So therefore, these begotten need to be. Ubenos Yisrael Yotza, this very famous Mishnah, Becholos, they danced Bikramim out in the fields, in the vineyards, Umayu Omros. So the beautiful ones would say, Bachur, this is based on a principle called Eino Isha Eliyof. The view chasas behem that were not necessarily so beautiful. They would claim Al Tita Ene Necha Binoi Tene Necha Bivishpacha. In other words, even though we don't have that beauty, that physical beauty, but maybe that's not so important. Maybe in priorities, you should look at mishpacha. And this is based on another principle called Eino Ichel Lebanen. In other words, when you marry a woman, you want to have children from her. So don't put your focus and emphasis on choosing the most beautiful Miss Universe. But rather look at our yichus. We come from good families, solid families. And if you'll marry us, the children will be miyuchasim, and everybody will want to marry them. And now he invokes a pasuk in Mishle. Sheker achem bevel ayofi isha yiras Hashem itisalo. Now, this pasuk, I think, is being quoted by the third group of ladies who were not necessarily beautiful and didn't have yichus. They had yiras Hashem, maizim tov. So they would say, shekrachem behevel yofi. So yofi obviously refers to the physical beauty, and that's vain. And shekrachem, chen relates to yichus. Forget about yichus. The Omer and the Pasuk in Mishle, we were familiar with it, says, We see that what's most primary and is Royal Shabbat is the Maisim Tov. Now, once Rav Shimon Gamliel told us that Yom Kippur was a day of Simcha, and Yotos Benos Yisrael, Benos Yisraelim, Acholos Bekronim, we want to find some sort of remez from the Pasuk. Bechenu Omer, in Shir Hashirim, Perek Gimel, Tzeno Reino Benos Tzion, Bemelech Shlomo, Batarosh Yitralo Imo, Biyom Chasunoso, Ubiyom Simchas Limo. What does this mean?
the, the boys, the males, were Mitsuyanim Lashem. They were, you know, outstanding. They had Mila, they, had, they wore Tfilin, they wore Tzitzis. And they would go out. Yatsu, the Yiru Batarash Eichelo Imo. Imo means Knesses Yisrael. It's always called Imo. And the Melech here is Melech Shlomo. Now, Melech Shlomo means Melech Shalom Shalom. So they went out and they saw the Tiferes of the old Moed, which was Mo'utar. It was ornately draped. Bahar Begvan, it was Tcheles, Argoman, Salashani, etc., etc. And also, also, Bnei Yisrael Hashem, Lushen Hashem. And that day is Kaviochol, a marriage between the Migdash and the Simchas Libo, the, the people of Israel. Seno Re'eno Benos Tzion. There's a remez here in this possible that Benos Tzion Yotos Verotos Bimacholos. Beyond Chasunoso. Ubiyom Simchas Libo Shel Hashem. And the Tana now explains which Yom is, is considered Yom Chasunoso and which is Yom Simchas Libo. Yom Chasunoso Zemat in Torah. And that's a reference and allusion to Yom HaKippurim when the second set of Luchos were given to Klal Yisrael on Yom Kippur, on the 10th of Tishra. And Yom Simchas Libo said, Bin Yibay Samigdash. That's the day in which they did Chinuch. They were Machanet to Bay Samigdash. And Yom HaKippurim, Baya Echad mi Mei Chanukas Bay Samigdash, Arisham Bimei Shlomo Amelech. Yom HaKippurim, the Gemara says, was one of the days of Chanukah's face on Migdash, the first Migdash during Shlomo Mel's time. Whole Sugimoy got enough tests about whether they fasted on that day or they didn't fast on that day. And that's how the Mishnah ends. So we see that Yom Kippurim is a day that's Roy, that's appropriate and suitable for that Minog of Yitzhiyah b'Macholos. No mention in the Mishnah of an explanation for the 15th of Ah. The Gemara now goes back to the beginning of our mission, which is the beginning of our parent. Bishlosha prokem b'shana koanim nosim eskapeim arba pop biyom b'shakras b'musim b'mincho b'neila shiorim. And one of these three prokem that tiny os mabodos and yom akipurim. This doesn't make any sense because you're talking about nosim eskapeim on musaf. Tiny os mabodos miko musaf. We don't have a tefillah musaf, neither on a fast day, nor on a yom ha'maimot. So how can you possibly include both tainios and ma'amodos on the days in which they would no say kapayim four times, including musaf? There is no musaf on a tainios and ma'amodos. The Gemara answers, chisui mefzir, you have to read the mission in the following way. Bishlosha prokim, Koanim nosin es kapeim calls man shemis palalim. And on three occasions of the year, the koanim duchen on every tfila that they were spal, meaning chakras, mincha, and the ilah. We're leaving out musa. The Yeshman arba palmubim. And in certain cases, they would duchen four times during the course. So again, what's common to Tiny Osma Modus and Yom Kippurim is that there'll be an Asiyas Kapayim whenever they dab. In the case of Yom Kippurim, it'll be Shakras, Musaf, Minchani, Ilashiorin. On Tiny Osma Modus, it'll be Shakras, Mincha, 
and the Elas Shiarim, but it won't be Musaf. There is no Musaf on Tiny Osama Mothers. And the Gemara is going to quote another sheet. Omar Rav Nachman, Omar Rav Baravua, Zu, our mission that says that Kohenim are no some kapeim on all the tefillos, on three different occasions. That is divrei, so divrei Rabbi Meir. Only Rabbi Meir would agree to that. Aval Chachamim, the Chacham disagree. The Omrim, rather they claim that tefillah shachras and musaf yesh bem ne'ilas kapayim, but mincha ne'ilah ain bem ne'ilas kapayim. Now, offhand, this doesn't make any sense. Why does Shachas and Musab require a Dufinin and not Mincha Ne'ilah? The Gemara clarifies. Man Chachamim, who are the Chachamim who claim that there's no Nesiyas Kapayim, neither Mincha nor Ne'ilah, Rabbi Yehudi? This Sanya we learned in the Rice of Shachas, U Musab, Mincha, U Ne'ilah. These are on a tinus, on a fast day. Kulam Yeshbem Nesias Kapayim, Divrei Rabbi Meir. So according to Rabbi Meir, on a Tainus, every single tefillah, there are four tefillahs. Well, no, no, I shouldn't say that. The, the Ne'ilah is the Ne'ilah of Tainus. But in any event, there's the Sias Kapayim Kula on all the tefillos that they daven on a times. Rabbi Yehuda, man, Rabbi Yehuda disagrees. And he says the following. Shachris umusaf yesh bem nesias kapayim but Minchun Eila ain't by having the Siyas Kapayim. So that's the Rabbi Yehuda that we mentioned earlier. And he is this dissenting view. And he removes the Siyas Kapayim from Mincha and Neil. Rabbi Yossi is a third sheet. Neil Yesh by the Siyas Kapayim. Mincha ain't by having the Siyas Kapayim. He's sort of like a middle sheet of a compromise. But it's from Yehuda who holds that there's no Nesiyas Kapayim, neither during Mincha nor during Ne'ilah. And this Machlokes is not limited to Tainios. It applies the rest of the year. According to all Shikos, there's no Nesiyas Kapayim Mincha time. What is the three-way Machlokes here between Tanakama, which is Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Yehuda, and Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Meir Sovar, Kol Yoma, Taima Milo Parsi, Kawani Yadayu Bimin Chasa. Why do we exclude Birchas? Kawani, every min for the entire year. Shum Shikrus, because they already ate a Sa'uda. And now sometimes the Suda extends itself and they drink wine during the meal, during the course of the meal. By the time they get up to Mincha, they still are under the influence of the alcohol, of the wine. And a coin is not allowed to be no seas kappa when he's just shisu yayin after he drank, drank wine. But itna, Today, meaning on a Tainus or Mamado, so Yom Kippurim, Leka Shikros. We don't we don't care about Shikros. Why? Because it's a Tainus. It's Mamado. It's Yom Kippurim. So what are you going to tell me? No Nesiyas Kapayim Mincha time because of Shikras? What kind of Shikras there? We're fasting. So therefore we have Nesiyas Kapayim and Mincha. Right? The only reason why the Chacham made Xera and they excluded Nesiyas Kapayim Mincha time is because of Shikras. That doesn't apply to the Mincha of a Tainus. 
And we're not going to, you know, this is against the, what we call low plug. Normally, you know, you extend the law of mincha to all cases of mincha. You don't know. We're going to differentiate between mincha the whole year round and mincha on a tainus. And mincha on a tainus, we're going to introduce the CS kapayim, despite the fact that mincha the whole year round, we're afraid of shikros and we don't allow the CS kapayim mincha time. But tainus is the exception. Review this savar. Shachrus and Musaf to call Yoma. Lo shriach shikrus. And that's because we don't eat before Musaf. Now, I don't know what that means. It means you're not allowed to eat before Musaf, just one second. Oh, he says here, Rikan Yesh Lomot She Ain Odom Rashoi Lechol Ela Achri Tfilas Musa. However, in the Gemara Brothers Chavches, the Gemara rejects this Shita that you're not allowed to eat before Musa. Nevertheless, a Suda Gemura also Lechol. So I don't know exactly what te'ima means. Like, for example, you make kiddush before mutza, perhaps that's considered te'ima. In any event, shikrus doesn't usually happen during the morning hours of shakras and mutza. And logosu pe rabbonon, they didn't exclude nasiyas kapai, but mincho ne'ila. Now, again, these are days of tainus, but kol yoma shechicha shikrus. Rabbi Yudah holds that during the entire balance of the year, you have shikrus. It's very common during those hours because they've already eaten their suda. Is gozru be rabbanon. Rabbanon extended that. That's what I call the low plug. And they prohibited nesias kapayim, period. Even on days that they fast, even though there's no reason for Xerah of Shikras on a fast day, but it doesn't matter. The Rabbana going to equate Mincha Ne'ilah of a Tainus with Mincha Ne'ilah of the whole year round. That's the Shita of Rabbi Yehud. Rabbi Yossi Sovar, Mincha de Isa Bakola Shana, I can accept Rabbi Yehuda Shita with regard to Mincha, because Mincha is a, is a tefillah that we dive in the whole year round. The whole year round, we're worried about Shifrus, because he's already eaten his pseudo. And we're going to prohibit Nesias Kapayim Mincha on a times. Mincha de Isa Bechal Yoma, Gazu Be Rabbanan, says Rabbi Yosef. Even on a Tainus, we're going to have this Zera because of Mincha the whole year round, which prohibits Nesias Kapayim because of Shikras. But Ne'ila no less Bechal Yoma, right? Ne'ila is a feel that we only had on a fast day, Lo Gazu Be Rabbanan. Rabbanan did not prohibit Nesias Kapayim because of other days in the year, because there is no such thing as Ne'ila the rest of the year. On Rabbi Yudha Marav, which means that in theoretical terms, the Kohanim would be no say Kapayim on a Tainus, even Mincha and Ne'ila, but Rabbi Yochanan Omar, Nagu Ha'om Kirabi Meir, V'Rav Omar Minog Kirabi Meir. So there are two statements here that sound very similar, but yet they're different. One statement is halacha kirabi meir. The other statement is nagu ha'am kirabi meir or minag kirabi meir. So the Gemara now explains the difference. Man di amar halacha kirabi meir means darshina le We will publicize in our public lectures that halacha is like kirabi meir, so that everyone could follow. And implement the sheet of the view of Rabbi Meir. 
And that's because Rav holds that it's absolutely clear that we passed him like Rabbi Meir. But Mandi, I'm going to Rav, who says, Minak Rabbi Meir. Is Midrash Lodar Shina. We're not going to publicly teach that the Allah is like Rabbi Meir because it's not absolutely clear. It's not 100% certain that we paskin Lakula like Rabbi Meir in this case. But Ori Morina, if an individual comes to ask us a question, we can paskin for him that it's a minute kosher. He has what to rely on. And this gives it a Taurus minute. So we won't publicize it, but the individual, if he comes to ask the question, will whisper in his ear that this is a proper minute. Mandi Omar. But what about Rabbi Yochan who says, Nagu? Right? Nagu Om to Rabbi Meir? He holds that Doruye Lomorino. So first of all, he agrees with Rava that we don't publicize a psak like Rabbi Meir. That's number one. But Oruye Lomo Rita means even for Yachid. He's going beyond Rava. Rava said that if a Yachid asks the question, we could give him this answer that's a minute kosher. But Rabbi Yochan holds no. Even if a Yachid comes to ask us, we're not going to rule in favor of Rabbi Meir. But he ovid, ovid, velo madrinam. However, if on his own initiative, he implemented the Allah of Rabbi Meir, he went up to Tuchin, mincha time, on a tainus, is ein machzirin also. We're going to allow him to, to complete the Tuchin. Of Nachman, our Allah of Rabbi Yosef, which means in the il of a tainus, there is the siyas kapayim, but not minchatam. So we don't pass him like Rabbi Meir at all. And therefore, if somebody on his own initiative wants to be knowing like Rabbi Meir, we're going to protest. Ba'alacha ki Rabbi Yossi. The Gemara's final conclusion is that we pass him like Rabbi Yossi. Gemara asks the following question: "Why is the my time of parsei kani a day of bimin chasut etanisa? Why is it that our meaning is that the kohenim will duchin on tefilas mincha v'tainis? If the if we paskin the halacha like Rabbi Yosi, there's no nesias kapayim mincha time on etainis. And the Gemara answers: Came into besalot l'shkias achama kaparsi kitfilas neila dami. We're going to allow nesias kapayim." Right before Shkia Sacham, at the end of the day, so we're going to delay Mincha until the last possible moment before Shkia. And that's like Tfilas Ne'il. So that normally the Minig was on a Tainus. They would gather in the shuls from the beginning of this man mincha, the earliest time for mincha. But this minog is not going to be accepted in our time. But rather, we're going to delay mincha until the last possible moment in order to facilitate the filas kapayim. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, nesias kapayim bitfilas neila dami. This mincha is at the time period, which is some of Lashkia. That's the time that's set for Ne'ila. And therefore, it's not similar to the mincha of other days of the year where they must pal the on Gadol. So, you know, we want to eat a Suda sometime in the afternoon. Let's call it a lunch, right? So we want to daven mincha as early as possible so that we can daven and then eat, and eat lunch. However, on a fast day, we're going to delay mincha to the latest possible time 
So it becomes like a tefillah ne'ilah, and therefore we could be no seas kapayim. And even Rabbi Yossi would agree that in a case of a tainus, we don't have exera to prohibit tefillah mincha as far as the seas kapayim is concerned. Because in our time, the tefillah mincha on a tainus is different than tefillah mincha the whole year round. The whole year round, they would have mincha early like what we call mincha gedola, but on a tainus they would have mincha late. So I don't know Allah if we pass like this, because I know here in our base medish we have mincha pretty early on a tainus. Oh, he says here, Hainu dafka bimeya. Okay, this requires more study. We don't have time for this. Anyway, the kuli almanias, the Gemara says all the Tanoim agree that shikar also in kapayim, even Rabbi Meir, who is Matur Nesiyas Kapayim in Mincha Vatayimus. That's only because there's no Shikras. But had there been Shikras, then an intoxicated Kohen would be enjoined from the Nesiyas Kapayim in Oni Mili. What's the source for that? Om Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Mishu Bar Kapora, Laman is Mechal Parshas Kohen, Mevaret, Le Parshas Nazir, so the parsha in Nasim of Birchas Khan comes right, right after the parsha of Nasim. So you have Naso Bamid Bar Perkvav, which opens with the parsha of Nazir, and that takes us all the way to Pasuk of Beis, and then Pasuk of Gimel is already Taber al Aaron, Kosev Archa Bnei Shaloma Lecha, Ma Nazir Osur Biyain Af Kohen, Hamavarech. Just like a Nazir is enjoined from drinking wine, so too the Kohen who blesses the people. If he should sue Yain, he's excluded from the broth. Maskiflav, who had to Rabbi Zera, the father of Zera, has to cash on the Joshua Bar Kapar Viamulet. Another say was Ochaya Ben Zav. E man Nazir Asur Bechartzan. Is Af Kohen, How far are you going to go with this? Are you, going to, are you going to only enjoy the coin from drinking wine? Well, in the case of Nazir, if you have that analogy, a, a Nazir is not allowed to drink, uh, he's not allowed to eat even the klipa or, or the garin of a grape, as it says in the Pasuk, Mikol Asher Yeyose, Migefen Ayay, Mikharzanim, the Adzog. So that in the case of a Nazir, he's enjoined from eating chartzon. So should we, by analogy, say that a Kohen Mavarech is enjoined from eating chartzon? Our answer is on Rabbi Yitzchak, on Makra, the Pasuk says that a Kosh chooses the Kohen and the Shar Sol of Arach Bishmo. And here we have a hekesh between Sherus, which is otherwise known as Avodah Space Hamikdash, and the bracha Ma Misharis, a Kohen who serves and involves himself in the Avodah in the base of English Mutter Bechatzon, even though he's not allowed to drink wine. Because the Pasuk says about Yikra Perkyut, Yayin Vishechal Tech, Ata. So in terms of Sheru's, which is Avoda, it's only a Shesuyayin who's excluded. A Kohen who's a Shesuyayin is not allowed to do the Avoda. But as far as a Kohen who ate Chartzon, he's allowed to do the Avoda. Av Kohen Mavarech Mutter Bechartzon. And so, too, by virtue of this equation, a coin who's no se kapayim, even though he's not allowed to drink wine, but he's permitted to eat chartzon. And now we're up to that of Zion of an Aleph. And we'll very quickly just get to the, to the two dots here. E. 
if you have an equation between Birchas Koenim Sherus and Avoda, is Mam and Shoris Bal Mum Lo, is Avkoim Vorach Bal Mum Lo? But you can tell me if the coin has a blemish and he's possibly Avoda, therefore it's a facto, he's possible for Birchas Koenim. And the answer is why he's Kashul and Nazir. And Nazir, there's no exclusion or disqualification of a moon. So the Gemara immediately asks, well, my chaz is the mix, the machas l'kula, akish l'chumra. What svar do you have to take this hekesh of Messias kapayim l'kula on both sides? Meaning, from one side, you're going to tell, let's equate it to the din nazir because the spifas are parashios. And you're going to tell me that move is not possible with nazir, it's not possible with Messias kapayim. On the other side, on the other hand, you're going to be equating a coin to a misharitz. And you're going to derive that chartzon is not posel of mesharis, and therefore it's not posel in the case of a noseus kappa. Is akish lechura? Why don't you go the opposite direction in, in both studies? When when you have a smichus between nazir and nesias kapayim, why not go lechura and say that just like? In Nazir, he's enjoined from eating chartzon, so to a Kohen who eats chartzon to be possible to Nesis Kapayim. And from the equation between Kohen Mishares, the Avoda, where Mum is Posel, we're going to go Lechumra and say that Mum is Posel even for Nesis Kapayim. And the Gemara answers, Asmachta Ninu Mirabonon Ulukula, all these drushas from Nazir and from Kohen Mishares are only. Asmachtos, they're not what you call Joshua's Kuburos, it's only a remez, it's a smach, but it's all a Gzeira de Rabbana. And therefore, we're going to dash it means for Muslim, Linian Chartson and Balmum, Lakula, and not Lakumur, because when we're dealing with an Asmachta de Rabbana, we always establish Lakula and not Lakumur. So therefore, the Isa Kohen Shikar, Lisa Kapab, is only de Rabbana. That is the final conclusion of this of this gemar. And I was just thinking that perhaps that's why we have certain kulas on Simchas Torah, maybe because the Iser of Shikar for Nesias Kapayim is only Dirabon. So here's where we got up to for tomorrow. Elu Hein Ma'amados. And that's where we will pick it up in Mir Tzashem, in Mir Tzashem tomorrow. On the top of Chav Zion, so wishing you a great day. May I ask what time you're going to start tomorrow morning? It's hard to say. You know, the dafim are so long, and I don't know who's coming. You know, now you're telling me you're coming tomorrow, so let's make up that we can start tomorrow at 8.30. Okay, then? Thank you so much. Okay? Thank you so much.